And we're going to continue to talking about hope this morning. Boy, we are living, amen, in tumultuous times, difficult times, as we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Let's turn there together and just uh, begin there. And I know I shared that last Sunday, but uh, I want once again to look at that scripture. 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy, yeah, chapter 3. Y'all keep me straight here now. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. People will be lovers of self, of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form or the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. Then look with me down in verse 13. Or start in 12, if you will. Chapter 3, verse 12. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. We live in a day, my friends, and I I, I know this may not sound very encouraging, but I've got some words for you that are truth and some words for you that are encouraging. Amen? And uh, that's why it's so important that our hope is not in this world. The scripture says we're living in these difficult, they're dangerous, they're, they're furious times, they're violent times. Even this morning in Baton Rouge, there's been a couple of policemen that have been killed, mowed down by gunfire near the police station, I understand. Very grievous, very difficult times, and we need to understand this. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you today and preaching about hope, but the reason we need this hope, that we need this anchor for our soul, as Hebrews 5 tells us, is because things are as difficult as they are. And let me, let me tell you this, and I know you, I, I don't want to discourage you, but, but listen, evil is going to get worse. And that's why it's important, as, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians, I think, chapter 5, it says, Even for this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. If we're in this world only. See, I thank God I'm checking out of this world. Amen? This world is not my home. And that's why we've got to set our hope on God. Set our hope on things above. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. and, and, And not on the things of this world. We're moth corrupt and, and, uh, and, and things don't last. It's all temporary. Amen? That's why we got to seek first his kingdom. Our hope is not in this world. <clears throat> That's the key right there. Evil men will go bad to worse. The problem, we have a real sin problem, don't we? We have a real problem with, with godlessness in our society. And we know that the answer to godlessness is godliness. And God has made a way. He has given us what we need to take care. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That's the need today, to pray that people hear and respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've got to keep that in the forefront. And it's urgent that we preach the good news. Amen? You say, well, we dare look forward in this day and time? In these violent, hard, difficult, grievous, dangerous times, you're telling me, Pastor, to look forward to the future. Yes, emphatically and unapologetically look forward to the future. If you're in Christ. The other side of that coin is, if you're not in Christ, the Bible says, before we were without God and hopeless in this world. Not anymore. But where do you stand 
with God, I plead to you in the name of Jesus to set your hope, your confidence, your trust in God. He's the only answer. I I wish I could tell you that this world is just going to get so much better. And God wants us to pray and he can change some things and he can intervene. But in the long time, we know what's happening to this world, don't we? Amen? That's why it's so important that your faith, your trust, your confidence be in God and your hope, not here, but in heaven. Praise God. We need that anchor in these tumultuous times. We read about it in Hebrews 6, 18 and Romans 15, 4. And so look that up and without going back and reviewing too much. But we have this as a sure and a steadfast anchor. Oh, God, have mercy on those who don't have this anchor, who are hopeless in this world without God. Did you hear me, church? We have to understand that. People without God, there is no hope outside of God. Let me tell you this, too. With God, nothing is hopeless. Come on, with God, there's nothing. There is no hopeless situation with God because he is the God of hope. The only hopeless situation is hell. There is no hope. I read a comment sometime back, and it was in a movie or something. So, you know, I didn't see it, but <laughs> heard about it, read it for something. Anyway, there was a sign where you went into hell or something, and it said, put all hope aside. Hey, the, the, hell is hopeless. This world without God is hopeless. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen this morning? God, we need to be encouraged. Yes, evil is going to wax worse and worse, but we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond all that we could possibly ask or think. And we've got to hold on to this hope. Look with me in Colossians chapter 1. And because of the situation in our our world and and, and the grievousness of it and the the difficulty of it, the, the violence and the danger, many people are being just taken back and and losing heart even. Don't even want to go on and heal people. What's the use? They don't even get to where they don't even want to leave the house. Fear takes over. And we don't live in fear. We live in hope. Amen. We live in hope and we live for hope. Hope in God. Look with me. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. I'm going to start in 21 if you well, you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he's reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, that's been proclaimed in all of creation under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. We cannot lose hope. As we read last week, we we can be encouraged to hold fast, to seize this hope and not let go. Did you hear me? Don't let go. Continue in the faith, not shifting from the hope of the gospel, not moved away from the hope of the gospel. There is no other hope, my friend. But the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the salvation that comes through him, and the forgiveness that comes through him. We have a hope. And since we have this hope, we're very bold. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Let's look there together. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Praise God for his throne of grace this morning. Oh, God. While you're looking for that, just had a great time. And it was so inspiring and encouraging Friday at noon at the courthouse in Dangerfield. As we met together, I I didn't count, but 
there are maybe 75, um, 80 people. Uh, I'm just guessing. That's a ministerial count, you know. You know, we look and count feet, and it says two, four. No, just joking. Just joking. <laughs> but we, honestly, there was a good crowd there. And, and what made it so good was not just the numbers, but the variety. Red and yellow, black and white, precious in his sight. Baptist, Methodist, uh, what all? You could probably name them, and most of us were there. And as a sign and a, and a symbol of solidarity and, and unity and community. And I believe it's just a seed, the start of something very big. And it just welled up in my spirit. And, and we've tried and over the years to, to have prayer times and do that. And, and, and some of them are good. And, but there's just something now. It's in the air. And, of course, the, 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 the danger, the threat. And I don't want it just to secede whenever maybe the threat goes away. Things die down. Well, people, well, we don't need God. Too often that's what happens. People come running to the church and running to God because things are bad. And then when things are not as bad, call a prayer meeting and few show up. But thank God they were there. And there is such a great need. We were reminded again over the last couple of weeks, even this past week, as lives, more lives were taken by merciless, godless, evil people. Second Corinthians chapter 3. So I want to encourage you to pray that we can take what God has planted and begun and through his strength and grace and, and just see what God wants to do with it. Amen. I see hundreds, hundreds of people gathering Somewhere at the football field or somewhere. Janet saw it too, didn't you? Mentioned it to me. This is, this is the start of something that we need to, to, to nurture and, and to grow. And please be in prayer about that. We got to come together. Amen. Not just red and yellow, black and white, but the church. And, 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 and where there's division and, 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 and prejudice and, and all of that is it's horrendous. It's sin. Amen? To think that somebody is better than somebody because they're of a different color. To think that somebody is better than somebody because they attend the right church. God forbid. Pray as David, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my ways and see if there be any offensive way in me. As Elizabeth shared this morning, and I guarantee you when you get before God and you get honest and allow God to bring to the surface that which has been maybe covered up uh, just, just for, because of time or ignoring it. And let, let those offensive ways come to the surface so God can cleanse it. Amen. I challenge all of us to get before God and examine our hearts and see where we measure up. See if you can find that splinter in that eye. It's easy to point and it's easy to, to blame, and it's, but it takes a little more maturity Say, Lord, here am I. Search me. Search me. Search me. Search me. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Mm. And yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. 
Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And with all, and we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. And from this comes, or this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We have such a hope. Therefore, we are bold. Because our confidence is in God, who God is, and what he has said, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. It says so in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. As we talk about how to overcome depression and discouragement and, dis, dis, and being dismayed and discouraged, it takes his presence. You don't want to conquer that discouragement, despair, and depression is the very power of his presence. And we can come because of our hope in God. Our, our confidence is in him. Our trust is in him. Because of that, we're bold or we can come with confidence. And because in Christ, that veil is not there. We can see him. His, listen to me. We can see God. We can perceive him. We can understand him. And that, my friend, the power of his presence and intimacy with him will conquer your discouragement. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. Get in his presence. Paul and Silas, their hopeless situation, bound by stocks, Shackled by their burden. Hey, we can do something. Amen. We can respond. We can come to the throne of grace. And they begin to sing and, and, and shout praises and, and pray together and praise the Lord. You can do that in your time of depression. You can do that in your time of being dismayed and discouraged and in despair. Woo! We can see it. Because we have the hope, we're very bold. And Hebrews 4, 16 says, we can boldly or with confidence come to the throne of grace where there is grace and mercy to help us in that time of need, in that time of despair and discouragement. And then in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. I want to read that together. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. Timothy, Titus, Hebrews, <laughs> Hebrews 6. Hope you brought your Bible this morning. Woo! Because as we read, talked about last week, through the Scriptures, we have that encouragement. It's the Word of God. Who is the Word? Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's truth that sets you free. We'll see. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope, listen, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. Woo! That hope, because you know God, because you're in confidence with him, how can you be and have confidence in God because you know him? How can you know him? Because the veil has been done away with because we're in Christ. And we can see him. We can know him. We can understand him. We can talk with him. We can walk with him. Woo! In his presence, his right hand, there's joy forevermore. I believe Paul and Silas were filled with joy in the prison, in your situation. I'm not denying difficulty. I'm saying in the midst of the storm, there's joy the joy of the Lord is our strength. We don't have to wait till the problem's over. There's joy in the midst of your problem. If you'll see Jesus in his presence, veil unmoved, I see him. And he will show himself to you. He will reveal himself to me. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those who love him. But he hath revealed them to us by his spirit. There's things awaiting you because you love him. The things that he has prepared for you, 
We read in Jeremiah 29 in verse 11. I know the thoughts that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to bless you. Not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The things which he has for those who loved him. I hence it. It's not with a natural mind that we understand and perceive the things which God has prepared, already prepared for those who love him. Why can I say we have hope in such dangerous and difficult times? Because I know how much God loves me. I know how much he loves me. That's all I need to know because that covers everything. He loves me. He's faithful to me. He will help me. He will grace me. He knows what I go through before I even go through it. He knows the hairs on my head. God loves you, and you got to understand that. And with that understanding and the veil we move, and you begin to perceive, oh, how God loves me. And you sit in his presence, and you soak in his presence. I guarantee you there's not a depression, there's not a despair, there's not a discouragement that cannot be overcome by his presence. It's that power. As I said last week, we go through tough times, and we all get down at times. We're going to start next Sunday and speak specifically about depression and discouragement. What causes it and how to address it. Biblically, because I mentioned last week, there's, there, it's, it's believers and unbelievers alike. It's very real. God wants us to not sweep it under the rug, but address it. We're going to look at Bible characters, men of God, mighty men of God that suffered from depression. No, you're in good company. <laughs> Amen. And that's part of the problem. We, it's got this stigma to it when we, people get real discouraged and depressed and, and we think there's something bad wrong with them that we wouldn't put on somebody else. Amen. That's right. That's why we need to encourage one another. Encourage, even during these last days, we need encouragement. So I'm looking forward to looking at that uh, next week. So we can see, 2 Corinthians 3.12, we have such a hope that we, because of that great hope, why do we have hope? Because we know him. We know that he loves us. And we can be confident in him. We can hope in him. And it is sure. And it's a steadfast. And it will keep you sure and steady. That's what an anchor does. It keeps you from drifting way off where you're going to be a whole lot worse if you don't anchor yourself. You don't become steadfast and firm and immovable and not easily swayed and turned away from that hope which we have in God. And because of that veil that's been removed and, and we can come boldly to the throne of grace, the power of his presence, Intimacy with Jesus. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 3. Look together. 1 John 3, 3. Focus there, but let's read together starting in verse 1. 1 John chapter 3. See. It doesn't mean necessarily see with your eyes. But see it. Perceive it. Grasp it. Understand it. What kind of love the Father has given unto us. Mm. That we should be called children of God, and so we are. Oh, that gets excited right there. <laughs> I'm a child of God, praise the Lord. He's my Father, and He's a good, good Father. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, he's going to take care of me. The reason why the world doesn't know this is that it did not know him. 
See, the reason we know it is because we know him. And we can get to know him because there is no veil. And we can come boldly right into his lap and say, Lord, Abba, Father. But, beloved, we are God's children. And now we will. And now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we'll be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. Verse 3, everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. One thing this hope does, this confidence in God, this trust in the Lord, this steadfast, this sure anchor, this boldness that we have to enter into his presence, to know him, to be intimate with him demands us that we purify ourselves. Demands that we allow God to search our hearts and cleanse us of all wickedness. Yes, he loves us. And he'll never, unless you're, do you remember the scripture that says he gives grace, he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble? Oh, you saying God will resist me? Yes, I am. I'm repeating what the word said. Uh huh. Pride. God hates pride. Doesn't mean he hates you now. You understand? God doesn't hate anybody, he hates evil. But you cannot simultaneously come to God with a proud heart. You will come humbly before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You won't come in brash. You won't come in heady and high-minded and full of pride. That's why Satan himself got kicked out of heaven, and don't you think you won't either? Mm -hmm. He will resist. God hates pride. That's because it's the root of all sin. And We need to ask God, cleanse us of anything that's prideful in there. That's what prejudice is. That's what racism is. It's just pride, saying I'm better than. I'm better than. You're not better than nobody. You ain't better than nobody, no care how much money you make, where you live, what kind of car you drive. You're not better than anybody. We're all on equal footing. We come to the foot of the cross, and we come to God, and we're all equal. And that's... What we need to do in this day and in this time. And I want to encourage you today because we had this access, it's even more important that we say, Lord, search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there be any offensive way in me and lead me in the way that's everlasting. God, I want to know. And see, all God's going to do is forgive you. Ha <laughs> ha! Isn't that good? I mean, if you're coming humbly and say, God, show me, all he's going to do is just wash it away. Ha! Ah, isn't that good? He's not going to come. Well, I've been waiting for you to come. You sorry, no good. No, no, no. That's not what a good father does, is it? Good father says, oh, let me heal you, mend you, stitch you up. Mm, let me forgive you. Let me wash you. Hallelujah. Because you come humble. And listen, the very fact that we have access by faith into this grace. He that has this hope and enjoys this access, let him purify himself. Sometimes we get and I don't know, God is Love and God is grace, but God will not tolerate our sin. Amen? He won't. He won't. If you see Jesus hanging on the cross with his brow beaten, bloody, unrecognizable human form, to do that and think he'll tolerate your sin, 
it is absolute deception. And won't tolerate it. But as Christians, because of our love for God, we shouldn't either. Amen? And that's why we come. God, search me. Search me, Lord. And in this day of time where finger pointing and this is happening and this is that, well, we've got to come to the throne. It's time for us, number one, the church, individually, but corporately as well. Have I done anything to make the problem worse? Have I done anything to make it better? I know God. He wants his church to shine in these dark days. What an opportunity to be the light. Stand with me. Mm. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I Dare not trust the sweetest spring, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. God, we are thankful and grateful today for this hope that is indeed a sure and steadfast anchor for our soul. God, I thank you. Even in the midst of these perilous, difficult, dangerous, violent times, God, we have a hope, and it is sure, it is steadfast, and it's not in this world. It is in you, O God. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we shall remember the name of the Lord, our God. Lord, I pray. Let's just pray for each other today. So many, God, I understand and and realize that they're in just seemingly hopeless situations. But, Lord, I pray for your divine encouragement today, God. Thank you, God, that we can come boldly. We can come with confidence to your throne of grace. Behind the veil, there is no curtain. Into the holy of holies and see you and know you and understand you. And enjoy you. Oh, thank you, God, for the power of your presence. Mm. Blessed be your name this morning, Lord. I want to give out a call today. We've already challenged Michael, challenged us with that one thing. As he told that rich young, what, there's one thing you lack. Oh, you've done all this and done all that and been good and done all that, but are you saved? The only thing that matters in this world, the most important matter in this world, is that you're right with God. And Lord, we pray this morning, sincerely and humbly, God, There's one in this house who is without God in this world and without hope. As you stir their hearts right now, God, that they'll lift their hand up and we can pray with them and witness their
deliverance today. Anybody? Just lift your hands and pray for me, Pastor. I need the Lord. I want to submit. I want to give up. I want to yield to Jesus Christ. Anybody? Do you see no hands? Yes, sir. All right. How many of you would honestly, well, say honest, don't be dishonest. <laughs> Y'all be honest now, though. Have, had, have been discouraged in your life. Raise your hand. All right. Everybody look around. Everybody look around. Just keep it up there. Let's all just. <laughs> That's all that, man. <laughs> and say, We need, it's the point I'm trying to make, how badly we need each other. How bad we need him and how much we need each other. And, and to stick together, and the scripture says, even more so, to encourage one another. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Talking to a lady this week, and, and oh, I'm, I'm, when I get, basically said, when I get my, my life kind of squared away and going through some things, and, and, I, I, and I'll be at church and, Hello, let's come together. Let's submit. Let's say, I need help. Will you pray with me? I'm going through a hard place. I'm in a hard place. We need each other. And when you're in this time of difficulty and, and stressed out, and we, we face all these issues, and it's in, I mean, it's, if you don't care, we'll be pulling your hair out. Frank, you've been pulling your hair out? No. I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no I'm joking. Okay. And, and, you know, she's not alone. That's why God laid this on. This is serious. I mean, there are people, believers, unbelievers, by the masses that are lose heart and just want to give up. And, you know, that's the very tactic of the enemy. And he can't steal your faith directly, but he can get you so discouraged your faith won't work. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And see, if you don't, if you're not hoping that expectation, then what do you, you don't need faith. And so if he can get us to lose hope, faith is not necessary because we don't need that because there's nothing to hope. There's nothing to expect. There's nothing to believe for. Faith is unnecessary, and so it's just inactive, and he robs it indirectly that way. But we're going to stand together, church. We're going to stand together. We need each other. These are tough times. We need, I need the church on the hill. I need this church. We need the body of Christ. We need the believers. We need every race, every, every color, every creed. We don't need every religion. <laughs> Amen? That's right. We've got to stand together in unity, in faith. And I, I just know I'm, I'm encouraged. I, and I, I, we, we face these things and there's difficulties. And, 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 and also God wants to break us. God wants to break us over the evil. That not just in the world. We say in the world, but hey, it's, it's, it's here. It's here. And it's an urgency, and we've got to pray, we've got to stand together and encourage. And I believe we're going to see, see God, we're going to see some victory. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that with all of my heart. We're going to see God in the midst of darkness. Boy, the, the, the beam is going to be such bright. Turn it on. Hello. We go to Gateway with our youth group. And um, we leave on Wednesday, and I just want to ask y'all to be praying for the kids that are going. I can't remember how many we have, but there's a group of about 15, I think. 13. 13 going, and um, I'll be there. I know Daniel and Allison will be there, and just really pray for the kids. This is a time where Mm -hmm. some of them have never entered into the presence of God before in their life, and it drastically changes them. And so I appreciate your prayers. and. Let's just lift them up right now, Lord. I ask. Thank you, Jesus. Um, 
over each one of them yes, right now, yes, wherever yes, they Lord. are. Lord, we pray oh, over their God. hearts. Oh. Lord, we ask that you begin Thank to prepare you. them Thank today. You Lord, that you heart. begin to prepare them right now, Transform Father, for what you have, life, the word that you're going to plant yes, inside Lord. of them, yes. the seeds that you're going to plant. God, I pray that when they return, mm. Lord, that we will water them, that we will encourage them, that we will be those that come along yes, beside them, Lord, to lift them up, to guide them to you. Lord, we pray mm. over... Um, just the leaders at Gateway, yes. we pray for what they're bringing to the table. Lord, we pray how they um, are searching for you and your heart, Lord. And so we ask that together, oh, Lord, Jesus. that we would call upon yes, your name, Lord, Lord yes, that we would Lord, welcome yes, the Holy Lord. Spirit in that place, yes, um, yes. and that we would seek you above all else. Mm-hmm. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Amen. Thankful for the church this morning. Amen. It is victorious. And overcoming by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony.